Alright everyone, uh, we're going to get started. So, um, thank you all for, you know, cutting your lunch a little bit short. It's a pleasure to be here. For those of you who don't know, I'm James. I graduated last year, but today I'm representing uh, TIGS Foundation as a board member. So, TIGS Foundation, we're responsible for stuff like funding some scholarship programs and the Capital Works. Um, for example, we were the organisation that raised the funds to build the IJC. And um, having enjoyed my time here, I have immediately come back to, you know, share stuff with, with you guys as, as part of the foundation. And um, what we're now starting to do is build up community engagement. So we're putting on these kinds of events. So Sue's gonna come talk to us to, today. Uh, and we really hope you can take a lot from them. So a little bit about our wonderful speaker today. Sue Elson is a LinkedIn expert. She's been on the platform for almost 15 years and was one of the first 80,000 members. And that's pretty incredible when you consider the fact that now LinkedIn has over 500 million members. So uh, she really knows her stuff having been a part of it for a long time. She's written three books and has contributed to many more. Founded the websites Newcomers Network, uh, Camberwell Network, and 120 Ways Publishing. And as a LinkedIn specialist and career development practitioner, she's here to talk to you today about how important a LinkedIn profile can be. So uh, without further ado, I'll present Sue. Please make her feel welcome. it against me that I've come all the way from Melbourne this morning so the school has really gone the extra mile to make sure that I can be here. I'm actually originally from Adelaide and that experience of moving from Adelaide to Melbourne was what got my first website started in 2001 and obviously I wanted to help people network and so I joined online networks and LinkedIn is one of the first online networks out there. So um, I'd like this to be as interactive as possible and you've been, some of you have got the printed copies of the notes and the rest of you will all get electronic access to the notes. And the notes are designed so that you can go back to your own computer and you can actually update your own LinkedIn profile. And I'm not paid by LinkedIn, I'm not here to sell LinkedIn, it is a free service, one I'm still using. But the idea behind this is to help you start thinking about your future working life. So whether you're going to end up in a career, whether you're gonna be in an enterprise, or whatever, I don't really mind. I, I classify myself as a gigster. That's what my fourth book that I'm currently writing is all about. I actually haven't had a normal full-time job since 1994. And so, you know, I do lots of different things and I really love the variety of what I do. So, um, yeah, so it's, it's really designed to be interactive. So how many of you have actually got a LinkedIn profile now? Can you pop your hands up? Only, oh, only about a quarter. Okay, um, all right, so, so a lot of you obviously are possibly not aware of what LinkedIn can do for you. So a lot of people think of LinkedIn as an online resume and definitely you can put that on there. So I've done some other presentations in Sydney at Knox and, and Ravenswood and, and other schools and a lot of those people actually have part-time jobs and are starting to build their networks and aiming to get internships and graduate programs either when they're studying university or even part-time. One of the schools I went to recently, a guy's already set up his own little video business and he's getting leads for his own little video business off of LinkedIn already, so before he's even finished year 12. Now, I'm not suggesting you give up your studies and, and start being an entrepreneur, I'm definitely not doing that, uh, but I am encouraging you to start thinking about building a network because there is no such thing as job security, it just does not exist. But what will keep you going throughout your working life is having a network. And there's probably some people in the room here after school's finished, you never want to see them again. And there's probably some people in the room that you would really like to keep in touch with. Or in five years time, you might change your mind about them and decide you know, they weren't so bad afterwards. So it's a really good idea to start building these connections. And if you just get their mobile phone number and they live overseas for a few years and come back, you might never be able to find them again. But if you've got a LinkedIn profile, um, you potentially can do that. So as I go through this handout, I'll be referencing other articles that I've written and I'm happy to answer questions at any point um, along the way. And one of the first links I've given is an article on how to choose your next job or career. Because I spent three years reading books about do what you love and the money will follow, what colours my parachute, all these different books about, you know, what am I going to do with my life? And unfortunately, none of those books helped me decide what to do with my life. And I came up with this little mind map exercise. So if you'd like to try that out, um, because I figure that the person who knows you best is actually you, uh, you're welcome to try that. 
And the second link is to one on primary and secondary keywords. So even if you want to get a position at university, some of the courses require you to submit video interviews and submit applications and all that kind of thing. And you're going to have to be recognised for really being interested in that particular topic. So there's going to be keywords related to that topic. And also, uh, my children are 21 and 24, and I've, I've purchased their own domain names, .com, and I tell them they're gonna have to pay me a lot of money if they ever want them back, um, which is supposed to be a joke, so this is where you all laugh, but maybe not. Um, and I actually believe that all of us need to have a LinkedIn profile and our own website. So if you wanna get in ahead of the game, buy your own domain name now, even if you don't publish anything on it, I believe in the future all of us are gonna have our own website. Uh, but the second two articles about what to do before you speak to a website designer and how much you should pay for a website if you're actually going to start that journey fairly early on. The next couple of links are about the benefits of LinkedIn. So I've already talked about it being a network and for you being able to, to showcase some of your skills uh, that you've done at, at school. I used to be involved with the graduate program at Westpac. And we didn't just look at your academic achievements from university, we looked at everything you'd done both at school and at university. So if you're involved in sport, if you were, had a part-time job, all of those things counted as to the success of whether you'd get onto the Westpac Graduate Recruitment Program. So you can definitely showcase all of those sorts of things on LinkedIn as well. Um, there's also a business case, so if you're, if you're working for a business and you say, you guys should all be on LinkedIn, we can all get more business, um, there's an article to help show them about that and then also the reasons why. So I recently did a presentation to Monash Business School alumni and they've all been out of university two to, to five years and I asked for a show of hands how many of them had received an opportunity via LinkedIn and nearly everyone in that room had got an opportunity via LinkedIn um, after graduating from Monash. So, you know, this is another really good clue that um, this platform is actually working. Does anybody have anything to share from the LinkedIn profile that they have that's actually been interesting so far and are courageous enough to tell everybody else? No? Okay, I'll move on. Um, do any of you have the LinkedIn app on your phone? No? Okay. Oh, we could have done this really cool trick, but we'll, we might have to leave that for tonight. Okay, so just to give you a bit of background on LinkedIn, um, it started in 2002 in the, in the uh, living room of co-founder Reid Hoffman and was launched on the 5th of May 2003. As James mentioned, um, I'm one of the first 80,000 people in the world on the platform. I'm number 77832 and I joined on the 21st of December 2003. Um, it's the world's largest professional network with nearly 600 million members worldwide and over 9 million of those are in Australia. And the number of active monthly users on the platform in Australia is increasing. So last year it was 4 million active monthly users, this year it's already up to 4.5 million. That compares to Facebook that last year had 17 million active monthly users, it's now dropped to only 15 million active monthly users. Uh, YouTube and Facebook and, and possibly even Snapchat would have more users, but uh, the people who are on LinkedIn are, are using it mostly for professional purposes. Their mission is to connect the world's professionals and make them more productive and successful. And it's publicly held diversified business model. So any of you who are doing accounting or business would understand that it's a good idea to have income coming in from multiple streams and they, they sell memberships, they sell advertising, they sell the LinkedIn recruiter program. So if you were a recruitment company, you'd have to pay more than $10,000 a year to have access to, to the LinkedIn recruiter service. They've also acquired lots of other things. So they've acquired Pulse, which is a newsfeed service. They've acquired SlideShare, which I think they're gonna abandon. Um, Linda, which is an online training. And in one of the biggest corporate takeovers of the world, in 2016, Microsoft bought LinkedIn. So you can be sure that there's gonna be a lot more integrations with Microsoft products in the future. And it started off as a network, it's moved into publishing, and in the future, it's gonna be a business-to-business -business platform. So you'll actually be able to do business on the platform without having to go to another website or somewhere else. In the handout, there's also information on LinkedIn news, general details about LinkedIn, and you can also subscribe to the LinkedIn blog, which will keep you up to date with 
some of the changes that are occurring. So, um, as I've been doing LinkedIn presentations for quite some time, there's uh, various issues that people discuss with me when they say, I'm not really sure whether I want to be on LinkedIn. And I say, well, you know, you've got to have an online presence. Would you believe that up to 75% of people will Google you before a job interview or at a party or, you know, wherever else they, they might meet you? and 95% of them will Google you before they offer you a job. So you need to be aware that if you've got a LinkedIn profile and you've done something I'll show you later, it is likely to come up in Google search results. So it's one thing that you can control how it looks and, and tell your story. A lot of people who join get lots of requests from all these people they don't know to connect with them. It's not like a Facebook friend, it's like, you know, they want to sell you something, so you get to choose whether or not you want to connect with people. And you can also decide how much time you want to spend on it and whether or not you want to pay for the premium account. And I'm not going to recommend that for you just yet. Some people get a little bit anxious with LinkedIn, thinking I've got to write all this amazing content, and you don't. You just need dot points so you can explain your skills and your experience through dot points. Um, I'm gathering not too many of you guys would be scared of computers, but you know, they're part of life nowadays. And if you're going to work in a particular organisation, they may also have some social media guidelines that you need to abide by. So just be aware of those as well. Um, I also say that because it's online content, if you don't tell your story, you can't sell what you bring um, to an organisation or to a university or to another course or an apprenticeship or whatever it is you're planning to do because it's a database and databases work on content. So if you don't put the content in the database, you can't be found. So I'm going to show you ways to be found. And also LinkedIn has produced some content that's specifically designed for students and I've given a, a couple of links for that. So for those of you who already have a LinkedIn profile, you've probably started to have a little bit of a look around and I'd like to show you a few things to measure your success on LinkedIn. So when I log in, this is the screen that I'll get and here's my profile. And when I look at my profile, I can click on my network to see how many people are in my network. And this is a real time statistic. So unless I write it down, I can't go back and say, what was it on the 14th of September, 2018? Um, so I've currently got 14,000 809 connections and I don't know them all personally um, and that's internationally and I've actually said no to a lot of people as well. Now you can have a maximum of 30,000 connections and if you're an amazing content writer and you produce really interesting information you can have an unlimited number of followers. So somebody like Richard Branson's got loads and loads of followers but he can still only have 30,000 connections. So to see how many connections, sorry, how many followers I've got, I can click on my profile and scroll down to my dashboard. And here it says I've got 15,373 followers. So that's more people are interested in my content than are actually connected to me. So these people have decided that the, the information I produce is of interest to them. So even if I don't connect with them, they want to see that information. So if you want to be known what's called as an influencer, um, you would try and get more and more followers reading your content and you would keep a record of, of how many followers you've got. And also if you were looking at somebody else's profile, you can decide whether they really know their stuff by how many followers that particular person has got. The next thing is the number of views I've had in the last 90 days. So 1,361 people have looked at my LinkedIn profile in the last 90 days and I would not be expecting any of you to achieve that number because obviously I'm on the platform quite a lot but my favourite thing to do on LinkedIn is what I call reverse stalk and see who's been looking at me and I'll just see if anybody at the schools has popped by my profile recently and there he is <laughs> Mr McBain has had a look at my profile this morning and um, I get really excited when I see people who've looked at my profile. So you stalk me as often as you like, I'll be excited by that, and I'll think you're trying to get ideas as well. And because I'm on the free account, I can only see the last five people who've looked at me, 
and four of those people have looked at me anonymously, so I don't even know who they are. But if somebody looks at me, there's a 30% chance I'll then look at them. So if you're really interested in working for a particular organisation, you keep looking at their profile, they're going to one day say, why Scott keep looking at my profile? And they're going to go look at Scott's profile, Mr McBain, I should say. Um, and yeah, they'll, they'll check you out. So just bear that in mind. It, it can be a really good cold calling technique. The next statistic is how many times I've appeared in search results. So obviously, I survive by getting gigs. And if I don't get gigs, I don't survive. So 1,003 people, I've appeared in search results in the last seven days. So for you guys, I'd suggest you have 100 or more views per 90 days, then you know your LinkedIn profile's working for you. And you would want more than 50 appearances in search results in the last seven days. And that would be pretty good statistics. And so again, I can reverse stalk and see the types of organisations that are currently <coughs> looking at me. This one I work for, this one I work for. Um, these guys have just produced some really interesting information on the gig economy. Um, I don't know. Oh, I've written for this publication. So yeah, it gives me a bit more of a clue as to what's happening with my LinkedIn profile. The next thing that's on the dashboard is whether or not you have an all-star profile. And that doesn't mean you're going to get a job offer or a university placement. All it means is that you have filled in most of the boxes on your LinkedIn profile. So you want to make sure that you've done that so that you can have what's called an all-star profile. And further down, you can get some recommendations for your skills. So you may have already decided that there's things that you really like at school and you want to be known for those skills. So you can put the top three in the skills and endorsements section. And then you can have another 47 more skills that you can be known for. Now, believe it or not, I had four and a half thousand votes for my skills, but a LinkedIn upgrade wiped them all out. So unfortunately, I don't have many votes, um, but I can still shuffle these skills around. But what I want to be most known for, I've put my top three in, in the top of that list to make sure that they're available. What you'll also see, and this is a really good idea to nag some of your favourite <coughs> teachers and, and colleagues at school, is to get some recommendations because that's like a written reference. And so if people see those recommendations on your LinkedIn profile, they don't, they feel more confident about the quality of your capabilities. So I encourage you to get six that you've received and six that you've given to other people. And these two people here are pretty smart because they've come along to my event and they know that I'm always showing my LinkedIn profile. So now every time I showcase my profile, you know, the, the recommendation they wrote is, is promoting them. So you could be quite strategic and you might say, well, I, I met somebody's parent and they work at that company and I'd really like to work for them. So maybe I'll write a recommendation on their LinkedIn profile and then every time somebody looks at that profile, they'll see my details. So you can be quite strategic about who you actually recommend. However, a recommendation can be used in court. So if you said that somebody was really good at a skill, you've got to be pretty confident that they are good at that skill. So, so just keep that in mind. But it's a really good idea to have at least six recommendations that you've both given and received. Now, further up the top, we always have to be prepared for the unlikely event of the software crashing and us losing all of our data. So one of the things we can do is we can save a copy of our LinkedIn profile to a PDF document. But before we do that, we're going to change the settings on Google Chrome to ask where to save files before downloading. So it doesn't just automatically go to the downloads folder. So we'll scroll down to advanced and ask where to save each file before downloading and close that tab. And now if I choose more here, I can choose save to PDF. And when I save it, I always save it with today's date back to front. So 2018-0914 then with my name in the file, and I always put dashes between the file 
uh, words so that it can be found in uh, website queries. So I do a lot of web design work, so I always use this methodology. And I also put the word LinkedIn in there and the word profile. And I would save it wherever I wanted to put it on my computer. And then I know that on the 14th of September, that's what my LinkedIn profile looked like. Then if I did lots of updates, I'd save it to PDF again. Now you can also use this for another reason. Can anybody think of why I would do this another way? Job yep, so if you had a quick job application on the run, you could just quickly save to PDF and pass that on. The other thing is, I can actually go to Mr. McBain's profile and choose save to PDF, print it out and borrow a few of his ideas because if he's a specialist in something that I wanted to be known for, I could, you know, perhaps borrow some ideas and it's another really good way to um, improve your own LinkedIn profile. Why reinvent the wheel? The next thing you need to do is download your data. And one of the things that can happen is if a platform crashes, I would lose access to those 14,000 people who are my connections because I don't keep a record of them. So if I go into the privacy section here and choose download my data and I request the works and I put in the password, which I won't do now because I don't need it, um, what I will do is I'll get an email from LinkedIn with a link in it and when I click on that link I'll be able to download all my files and one of those will be a file I can open in Excel with all of my 14,000 connections in it. So their first name, their last name, their email address, their current job, their current company, and the date I connected with them. So, so they're really cool. So that's just general background information. So what I'm gonna do now is show you some of the most important things you need to do with your LinkedIn profile. And I'm going to invite anybody who does have a LinkedIn profile, if they're courageous enough, we'll put your profile up on the screen and we can evaluate it for you after I've shown you this. So if you're, you're confident you'd like some extra free advice on your LinkedIn profile, we can do that um, today. So first of all, the thing that you absolutely must do on your LinkedIn profile if you want to be found in Google search is to change your public profile URL. So up here, you can see that I've changed my URL to just my name, Sue Elson, one word, all lowercase. When I changed it to that, I optimised my name in Google search. So if you Google Sue Elson, my LinkedIn profile comes up. In fact, it does it so well that even when I had my own website, sueelson.com in 2012, I started that, um, I still couldn't get it above my LinkedIn profile and Google search results. So it was really important for you to change your profile URL to your name. And if your name's, you know, Jason Smith or something, and there's lots of Jason Smiths around, then you're going to have to put perhaps a dash between your first name and your last name, or add in a number or some other letters afterwards. But please do not do anything to do with your date of birth, because that's part of your identity. You really shouldn't have that. Um, anywhere else and if all of a sudden you do something terrible and the media is chasing you um, and you don't want to be found you can just come in here and turn this button to off and you'll disappear off the internet so you don't have to delete your profile you can just make yourself anonymous also in here you can decide how much is visible to the rest of the world so it's a good idea particularly if you are looking for work to make sure that all those are turned on so that's the first thing the next thing that's really important is a photograph and believe it or not it took a week of preparation and a professional photographer 70 shots before we got that one so it's you know you don't just take one happy snap out outside you take a photo that really represents how you will be perceived um, by the people you want to attract to your LinkedIn profile. So as a general rule, you would have your eyes on the one third line and you'd be looking at the camera and smiling. But some of my clients don't have that. One of them is an artist and she's wearing sunglasses with her hair over her face and you can't see anything. But she's very private and that's okay because that fits with her artist persona. Um, so if you want to be seen as the CEO of a Fortune 500 company, 
you know, you can't be wearing a t-shirt, um, you know, riding around on a motorbike maybe, it just might not really look quite what somebody expects. So, um, yeah, so make sure your photo is aligned. And you can also choose a background image here. So I encourage you to choose something that, again, <coughs> shares your message about what you want to be known for. A beautiful picture will make people look at the picture instead of your face. And you really want them to look at your face. That should be the, the main goal of, of this. The second thing, oh, and in the notes, I explain that you can also send a copy of your photograph off to photofeeler.com and other people can vote on whether you're competent, influential or likeable. So, you know, you might have fun having uh, people vote for your photo and, and assessing that. Now, the headline is the most important <coughs> spot. So even if you're just looking for a job in a pizza shop on a weekend, and you know, you say pizza shop in here, that's gonna help you get found under pizza shop queries. But I want to be known for my LinkedIn services. So I've given myself a label, which is independent LinkedIn specialist. So people can remember that that's what I do. So if you just wanna be a student and start building your network and you know, continue studying, that's fine. You can say you're a student and you're really interested in these topics. That's that's perfectly fine for now. But people, if you say, oh, I do this and I do that and I do something else, people can't remember that and you're not likely to get opportunities from that. So I always try and think what's a good label to give yourself and then the other words that you want to be found for can come after that. So you'll see there that I've got three and a half lines worth of words. If I updated that on my laptop, I'd only have about two lines but because I updated it on my phone, I got nearly 200 <coughs> characters in there. So that's why I'm able to attract so many search queries to my LinkedIn profile, because I've actually updated it on my phone, not just my laptop. And obviously what I want people to do when they come to my <coughs> profile is call me and or find out what I offer and decide whether they wanna pay for it or not. So I've provided my email address and my phone number. And on an Android phone, they will be be able to press that and be able to email me straight away or call me straight away and I don't have my phone buzzing all the time because my message is really clear I'm an independent LinkedIn specialist so they're not going to ring me for you know geography lessons because you know that's not anything on my LinkedIn profile you'll also see that I've got a bit of blue <coughs> I call it so I've put some videos in here and I've gone into a bit more detail about my background and what I offer I've put in a bit of a bio in there. And then I've also started describing my jobs. So any part-time job you have, you can start filling it in on your LinkedIn profile. Even if you're just babysitting, you can still put that information online. And um, so long as there's nothing that's commercially sensitive, you can't say, you know, you saved the, the company $3,000 when you found a problem, you know, that doesn't look very good. So you might be able to say, you know, we've reduced expenses by 20%. That's, that's, that's a really good thing to be able to promote. But yeah, you, you definitely want to be able to tell a little bit of your story as you go through. And I've, um, in the notes, given you, um, I found the YouTube video about Be Both, Be Ticks. Um, and I thought that would be a nice video that you could perhaps put and showcase on your LinkedIn profile about your time here at TIGS. So uh, that might be something you can consider. Um, do you have email addresses at school? <coughs> yeah. So I'm also going to suggest that you add your email address to your LinkedIn account. Now, obviously, when you're not part of the school, that email address won't give you access to anything, but people already know you via that email address. So I want you to add it to your LinkedIn account whilst you're here and not take it off so people can still find you. So you'll see under me for email addresses, I've got all these different email addresses on my account because I've had all of those email addresses and I want people to come to this profile and not, not accidentally create another one. I've also added in my phone number, but you have to be really, really careful when you add a phone number to, to social media because all social media wants is more and more members. And so what they will always try and do, once you've given them your mobile phone number, is they're gonna try and go through your phone and get all of your contacts out of your phone and invite those people to join LinkedIn as well. So they're, they're constantly gonna be asking, 
if they can check out and add your contacts to LinkedIn. Now, one of my clients was a woman in her 30s who'd been on lots of first dates. And so she accidentally said yes, and all those first dates were invited to connect with her on LinkedIn, which was extremely <laughs> embarrassing. So, as I said, if you're gonna put your phone number on here, try not to let it connect the two things together. Um, you want it so that people can reach you, but you don't want it so that you're annoying great auntie Dora and anybody else who you've had in your phone. Um, also, if you're going to be scrolling through the news feed, you can turn off autoplay videos so you don't lose all your, your data allowance as well. In under privacy settings, and, and I'm only going to focus on the main settings, there's lots more settings that you could actually change, but we're just going to focus on the main ones, is if you're, particularly if you're looking for even a part-time job, either whilst you're still at school or afterwards, I encourage you to make sure that your email address is available to everyone on LinkedIn. So that means when they click on that contact info section, they can see your details and reach out to you directly. I'm also going to suggest that you turn this one off, viewers of this profile. So if I leave this turned on and somebody looks at me as a LinkedIn trainer, when they scroll on the phone, at the bottom it's going to say, well, people who looked at Sue also looked at all these other LinkedIn trainers, and that's not good for my reputation. So I have that turned off. But I might want to turn it on late at night just to see who my competitors are, and then I'd turn it off again. But for the most part, I'm going to suggest you leave viewers of this profile also viewed to off. The next one is um, when you go looking at people's profiles. Now, at the moment, if I looked at Mr McVeigh's profile, he would see that I had looked at him because I've said, yes, I'm, I'm going to be visible. But if I wanted to look at him sneakily before I got here without him knowing, I could make myself anonymous and then look at his profile and he would never know that I've looked at his profile. So this is again really good if you've got a job interview tomorrow. It's not good for stalking boyfriends or girlfriends. I mean, that is illegal. So, uh, but yes, you can make yourself anonymous before you look at someone um, through that particular setting. Also, if you start getting too many emails from LinkedIn, you can go to your communications section and you can change the frequency of how often the emails come through. Okay, next one is um, your contact information. So what you'll see in contact info is you can actually add three websites in here. And I'm gonna really encourage you, whilst you're all students and your parents are making this opportunity available to you, to add in the Illawarra Grammar School as a link on your website because you should be proud of the fact you're part of you know, this amazing school. So definitely encourage you to consider putting the website in there. And when you add it in, you just choose other and that way you get to write a little description in there as well. So you can mention the school. Um, if you've joined a professional association, you can mention that. If you've got your own website, you can put that in. Um, you might also like to link to the alumni page once you've left the school, or you might like to link to the school's LinkedIn profile page as well. Um, and you can also add in uh, your instant messaging programs, um, but again, don't bother with the date of birth. All right, have any of you started a business yet? No? Not officially? Sort of? Sort of, excellent. All right, so what you can do is you can create a company profile on LinkedIn. So if you go on the work menu, you can scroll down here and you can say create a company page. And what that does is that when you say that you're working at this company, it puts the little logo in your experience section. So really good idea to claim that and fill that in. And if you're working for somebody, always try and choose their name uh, when you do it. The other thing is when you write up your details for year 11 and year 12 and you'll see that because I'm from Adelaide I went to Henley High School and unfortunately Henley High School does not have a LinkedIn school so I can't show 
their logo on my LinkedIn profile. But the University of South Australia does. So you'll see that I've studied there, right here. So here's my education and the University of South Australia, because when I typed it, I chose them in the box that appear. So their logo appears there. And I've described the university and all my subjects. And then I found a video and I even put that in there. But my year 12, and you can do something similar on your LinkedIn profiles, but Illawarra does have a school. There's my year 12. So your Illawarra logo would go there. And then you can describe a little bit about what you've done at high school. Um, so if you've been involved in special groups or special activities, uh, you know, feel free to put that in. Employers love the fact you've just not been a student, but you've done other things at school. So be willing to showcase that. My daughter won a, an award in year nine that was a scholarship and she won a prize but it was, it was named after a woman who had died. So nobody outside the school knew anything about what that award meant. So if you've won an award at the school, describe what that award was for. So it was the award for, you know, high achiever in year nine or something like that, which is what my daughter's was. So, you know, you can fill in that kind of information and have that there as well. But at the moment, um, if we look at the Illawarra Grammar School, there's only 41 alumni, which is very disappointing because what that means is that people haven't actually chosen the school. I can't see what I'm typing there. I literally cannot see what I've typed, so I'll start again. It's there. Okay. I can see it. Okay, so at the moment, oh, we've got two more already, 43 alumni, so from yesterday. So I'd love to see that go up um, in the next week as you all create your own LinkedIn profiles and you can be sort of the first group of Year 12s who are 80% of you are actually already classified as alumni of the school. So I hear that you're, next year you're celebrating your 60 years of being here, so there'll be lots of other past students who can also if they say that they went to Illawarra Grammar School, that they can then be classified as alumni of the school. Now that's gonna be really, really helpful for you because if you're an alumni of a school or a university, you're more likely to come up in searches of other people who've been to that school or that university. So it actually gives you access to a lot more opportunities and James has decided to come back and give back to the school it might give you an opportunity to come back to the school. You might say, I want to get out of here and never come back. That's fine too. But it's a really good thing to um, mention where you've been and give a little bit of that story. Um, and also, if you've got friends who like the school, you can encourage them to follow the school. So they might not be an alumni of the school, but they could still follow the school and get the latest updates and uh, see what else. Now the other thing you can do is you can look at the school profile and if you really liked some of the, the things they've shared, you can also come in here, like, comment and share. So obviously this one, I've already liked it because, you know, that mentioned me. So I, I got notified that that went out and so I came back here and I interacted with that in my news feed. So just as you like, comment or share something on Facebook or Instagram or somewhere else, you can do the same sort of thing here on LinkedIn. And that is really good publicity for you as well because it, it lets people know that you value that content and um, it helps share it around. So that's, that's really good as well. The other thing you can do is talk about your volunteer experience. So I trust most of you have had an opportunity to do some sort of voluntary work. I've done a lot of work with scouts and um, two jamborees, a cubbery and, and professional associations. And it's been an amazing thing as a part of my career. So I really, really encourage you to do voluntary work. Uh, the, the jamboree that I went to in Sydney, um, I took kids out sailing uh, for two weeks as, as part of my voluntary experience there. So you have these amazing opportunities that you get volunteering that you don't necessarily get in the paid workforce. So I really encourage you um, to, to fill in the voluntary experience as well. Um, there's lots of other things. I presume you all speak English, so that's probably one thing you can add 
to your LinkedIn profile fairly easily uh, that you can speak English. And I did French for five years, so I've also mentioned that I've got basic French skills. And you can talk about some of the projects you've worked on. And that's really good preparation for job interviews because a lot of job interviewers will ask you what's called behavioural questions. And they'll say, can you tell me about a time when you had a deadline and you had to get the work done? And you say, oh, right, well, we had this project at school and there was these people. So if you've written up your projects, you'll be really, really well prepared uh, for those sorts of um, interview questions. Does anybody have any questions? Or am I explaining everything perfectly? Nobody's game? All right. Okay, so next thing is um, sharing content. And LinkedIn has this amazing news feed with lots of information in it. And you can scroll through and check out what's here. And the first stage of joining the content journey or the content world is just liking, commenting and sharing something. But if there's a video there, I would absolutely watch the video all the way to the end, even if it was from my best friend before I liked, commented and shared it. Because you want to make sure that what you're liking, commenting and sharing is good quality content. And if you start liking something about this topic, something about that topic, something about another topic, the poor computer will get very confused and not know what to put in your news feed. So all of a sudden I've started getting dog videos on my you know, LinkedIn news feed, which is not really what I need. But because I, you know, obviously took too long scrolling over the picture of a dog, they've decided I'm now interested in dogs and so I get more dog videos even on LinkedIn. So really, really interesting. They're measuring everything to try and make sure that you stay on the platform longer. So be warned, what you like, comment and share is a little bit of a clue as to what you're interested in. So if you're really interested in software development and you're always liking software development information, then you'll get more of that software development information <coughs> in your news feed. The second step is you go out and you look for software development information and you find it and then you share it in your news feed. And that's called curating. And the third one is where you actually create it. But you can't spend all your life just pushing content out. People say, well, they're always, you know, telling their story, but they're not engaging with anyone else. So I really encourage you to engage with other people's content as well. How are we going for time? Five more minutes. All right. So that's the news feed. The other thing you can do is you can write articles. So you'll see here I've written, uh, I think it's 55, it doesn't say, say there at the moment, it normally says how many articles. But anyway, there's lots of articles that I've written and what you can do if you're very clever is you can search engine optimise these articles. Now Mr McBain, I'm sure will be able to guarantee that I've never used this computer before because I've only just come here for the first time today. But if we go to Google and we Google tough love for the unemployed, I have written an article about that. And there's my two articles on LinkedIn, number one and number two of Google search results. So it can be a very powerful platform for sharing your message if you search engine optimise your content. So I explain how to do that in the notes. The other thing you can do is you can find people. So you can do research and look for particular people. So you might say, I want to do a gap year in the UK and I want to sort of find out what software development opportunities might be available in the UK for six months. So you click on the search box here and then you click on the magnifying glass and then you can go through and look for people, jobs, content and companies worldwide. So really good search tool. And you can also do an advanced Google search if you run out of that. And the last thing I'm going to show you is the jobs tab. So if you're genuinely interested in getting work, even part time, you can go into career interests here and you can say you're open to offers and you can say I'm currently studying year 12 but interested in part time or doing something in the school holidays and you can say what sort of time frame 
And also, if you're still looking for that UK opportunity, you can say, I'm interested in Sydney and London and any other locations so that you'll come up in those international search results as well. And I obviously don't want full-time, but I'm quite happy to consider contract part-time, remote or temporary, and in these particular industries. So you can tailor that for what you might like to do as well. Um, finally, um, as I said, the notes have a lot more detail and links that you can click on for more information. But one of the things I really want to remind you of is that you must not not abide by the LinkedIn user agreement. So a lot of LinkedIn sharks, I call them, are designing programs to scrape data off of LinkedIn, to automatically send connection requests, to create fake profiles, to produce ridiculous content, etc., etc. All of these things are against the LinkedIn user agreement. And if you disobey the LinkedIn user agreement, they can close your account immediately. So please don't try and shortcut things um, because they have very sophistic, al sophisticated algorithms to detect bad behaviour and wipe out your LinkedIn profile. Um, and if you accidentally do it, if you've saved your profile to PDF and downloaded your data, obviously you can try and recreate it afterwards, if not. And if you have the app on your phone, I'd show you how to do Find Nearby. But the main thing I'd really like to encourage you all to do is, number one, create a LinkedIn profile. Number two, talk about your studies here at Illawarra Grammar School and make sure you choose the school logo when you enter that information in. And number three, start playing around with it, you know, because this is where you can keep your network and build it up over time um, so that by the time you've finished any further studies or other courses or even Year 12, um, you can be ready for, for some new opportunities aligned with what you're interested in. So, if that's the time, I'm still happy to answer questions and if you don't want to ask in front of the group, you're welcome to come up to me. You're also welcome to message me via LinkedIn. You're welcome to connect with me on LinkedIn and get more people in your network. Um, I'm also happy to answer quick questions via email as well. So, more than happy to do that. So um, I hope you could all take a lot from that. There's a mix of really great advice, tips, tricks, and also some interesting cautionary tales, things we don't always think of. So um, thank you so much, Sue. Please thank her again. And thanks for taking time out of lunch again, and um, off to last period. Um, the first person who contacts me, I'll, I'll give the book to. So I'll check my phone. If you're on LinkedIn and you contact me, get the book. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.